Hello, my name is Dr. Ann Dabber Woods, and I am the Chief Nurse of Walters Clore Health Learning Research and Practice. Today, we're going to be talking about clinical judgment with Dr. Desiree Hensel. Clinical judgment has never been more important than it is right now today. We are in the middle of a COVID-19 pandemic and nurses are on the front line and having to make critical decisions that involve clinical judgment. And a lot of times those decisions make the difference between life and death for our patients. So our students today need to come out and be ready to practice and be able to put those skills of clinical judgment into place as soon as they hit the unit. It's really impingent upon our faculty to make sure that they're incorporating those skills of clinical judgment throughout the curriculum. Now, I'm a practicing nurse practitioner and I'm also adjunct faculty for a local university here in Philadelphia. And I can tell you that having clinical judgment is one of the most important skills that I possess because it allows me to make the best informed decisions so I can help my patients and provide the best care time over time. So I'd like to take this opportunity to share with you the conversation I had with Dr. Desiree Hensel on the concept of clinical judgment. Hello, this is Dr. Ann Dabra Woods, Chief Nurse of Walters Clore Health Learning Research and Practice, and this is from the desk of the Chief Nurse. I am here today with Dr. Desiree Hensel. She's the Dean of the Curry College in the greater Boston area. Dr. Hensel, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for inviting me to talk with you today about clinical judgment. Yes, so we know that NCSBN has put in clinical judgment into one of the things that they're going to start to measure. Can you tell me a little bit from your educational perspective why that's so important and why does it make a difference when we try to transition students from education into the practice setting? So clinical judgment, it really it's been around a long time. It's just we're starting to really understand where we have gaps in it and how important it is. It's the ability to take this information and to see the pieces, put it together and make the right decisions for our patients. And it's important for patient safety. We know about 60% of all errors could have been prevented if our nurses made better decisions. The problem is healthcare is becoming so complex these days. And nurses, when they're um, training the upcoming generation, are not really in a position that they can let students make mistakes to learn from them. You know, it's a patient, patient safety issue. So what we find is our students go to clinical, but they may not have been put in the position to make the decisions or been allowed to make the decisions. So when they actually have to do it, they aren't prepared. So we know we need to find better ways to help our students become prepared so they can be good decision makers. So one of the things you and I have talked about is the importance of simulation and helping to teach students those skills around you know, critical thinking and clinical judgment. Can you talk to me a little bit more about that? Well, simulation is an ideal place. Um, when I'm in a clinical setting and I'm the nurse that, or the faculty member who's supervising a student, and I look and I see she's gonna make a mistake, I step in right away to stop it mm -hmm. because you know, patient safety comes first. In simulation, that student gets to make the mistake and then they get to understand what the mistake caused. And that imprints in a very different way to help them understand the consequences and to help them not make that mistake again. So simulation is critical, but simulation can help inform us too on how we test our students. You know, I've been in simulation, I've been since 2005, and one of the things I've come to learn is what you see in simulation are what students are really thinking. Mm -hmm. And it can inform your testing um, in very interesting ways. What I've recently done is I observed the simulations and that becomes a scenario for my test questions. And the mistakes I'm actually seeing my students make, I use as the options. I can give you a really good example. I do a, a, a hemorrhage um, scenario for a postpartum hemorrhage. And um, when the students would be testing it and the, and the patient said they felt dizzy, more often than not, I saw them raise the head of the bed instead of put it down. Mm. And so that was, that became a key item to me. They weren't understanding, but it was a really good place to integrate that into my test. Mm. 
I think that's really great. Um, I absolutely agree with you, you know, that we need to make sure that we have a safe place for students to learn. How do the students react when they go through the simulation and then you're be, being able to you know, talk to them about what they did in that learning experience that they have? How do they react to that? Well, if you've done it in a safe way, usually they are very grateful for the experience. The problem comes if you have people who aren't trained in the pedagogy and they start pointing out the mistake after the mistake. And that's really not what it's about. It's about the conversations to help them learn. If you have cultivated your simulation lab as a safe space for mm -hmm. learning, things that are learned, then, then students respond very well to it. And they overwhelmingly say, I'm so glad that I did it here and I didn't do it on a patient. And um, they tell us over and over, I can do things here that I can't do in the hospital. And that is really how it helps them develop that clinical judgment. That's great. Um, you know, one of the most important things around simulation is that debrief that you have mm -hmm. with the students. Can you tell us a little bit about the importance of that and how it, it fits into the framework of clinical judgment? So the debriefing, um, hopefully it's informed by a pedagogic um, approach. Usually it starts with some kind of a summary of the event. Sometimes people start with uh, students relieving their emotion, how did you feel about it? Sometimes it's tell me mm -hmm. how it starts. But then it goes into the little pieces. What went well? What didn't go well? What would you do differently? To help them uh, think through it and, and get others enjoying in the conversation who saw things differently mm -hmm. and different approaches. At the end, then there's usually some kind of summary is like what was the take a late lesson or how would this apply to a different situation? So let me take that postpartum hemorrhage for you. What they don't really realize is they were treating shock. Shock has some unique characteristics mm -hmm. in a postpartum hemorrhage, but treating shock principles is the same a lot of places. You decrease the head of the bed. You know, mm -hmm. you want to maybe elevate their legs. You're going to give them fluids. Those kind of things, those, those are universal. So helping the students sing, it looks this way here, how would it look in a different mm -hmm. place? That's helping them develop clinical judgments because we can't tell them every single thing they are going to see out there. The things have, haven't even been invented yet that they're probably going to see. Um, but if we can teach them how things look like in different scenarios, different places, then they're more likely to recognize it when they may not have actually had that lecture on what does um, shock look right. like with a pediatric right. patient. But they've seen it in other places. That's right. That's right. So you know, you've been you know teaching for quite a while, and you know, I would like to know from your standpoint now that we're really looking at clinical judgment and the use of simulation. Do you think that we're putting out students who are better better prepared I, for that transition into practice? I would like to think so. I think we need more studies on that. But in general, what I think is that we are putting out students who think more broadly. You know, the next step is testing them to make sure that we actually are, are um, teaching them the right thing and they're learning the right thing. So that becomes the next step and that's what the National Council is, is really focusing on, is making sure those entry level nurses are prepared for practice with that higher level of uh, testing on clinical judgment and the emphasis on that. And that's something that we as educators really need to focus on, that our questions are addressing those decision-making clinical judgment questions um, that are so important and that we're not just asking them, uh, is this a normal blood pressure or what does a certain rash look right. like? It's right. what the nurse does with the information. Well, I just want to thank you for being here with me today on From the Desk of the Chief Nurse and talking about clinical judgment and simulation. I think this has been really informative. So thank you so much. This is From the Desk of the Chief Nurse. This is Ann Woods saying thank you very much.